Hi, my name is Jabal and you are watching Accessibility with Jabal. The show is about community misconceptions about disability and we engage in conversation and discussions to benefit inclusion. I visited the Radisson Blue Hotel at the waterfront and we visited them to see how the hearing and the deaf staff work together. This shoot was taken pre-COVID 2020, so let's have a look. Hi, my name is Chippa and the sign language interpreter is Pedal. You are watching the disability show on Open Studio CDV. We are at Radisson Blue Waterfront Hotel, which is the first hotel group in the world to employ deaf staff. So come along with me and we'll meet a few people. Let's go. I'm here meeting with the general manager of the Radisson Blue Hotel in the waterfront. His name is Clinton Tom. And so we're meeting with him and I'm discussing a few things and asking him about deaf employment, why he also employed deaf and going more in depth on that. Hi Clinton, welcome to the Disability Show. Hi Jabbar, thank you for having me again and welcome to our beautiful hotel and uh, in Cape Town where it's a glorious day, summer's finally here. Wow, I'm really excited to be here today. It's a beautiful day, it's a beautiful hotel. Clinton, in doing research, um, we identified that there are many, many, many hotels. However, you're the first to start deaf employment. So why did you start this initiative? Um, so when you start in hotels, it's all about people. All your love for people, your love for guests, your love for staff. Um, so you're going to have to have that quality. Um, and it really is about people, whether you are deaf, whether you can hear, whether you have disabilities or not, but about growing people. Because I was afforded that opportunity when I started in this business. I started off as a restaurant host, restaurant supervisor, worked my way up then to general manager where I am today. So uh, people afforded me the opportunity and I feel that it is very important to give back. So that is why I employed deaf people because I am, yeah, deaf people, certainly they are more disadvantaged because people are scared of deaf people. Are they going to fit in? Will they be able to do it? Will they be able to do it? Uh, here is the question you always ask me, is how are they going to integrate with guests? Well, that has never been an issue, as I said many times before. We're sitting here in Cape Town. We're currently in a hotel where the guests and the hotel are mostly international tourists. So between hearing people, we struggle to already understand one another, already challenges. And so it is not an issue, uh, especially with hotels and international hotels and in Cape Town, it won't be an issue for deaf people. Wow, that's really interesting. Also with international people that come in and with making sure that gestures are used with international guests and any guests that you come that come into the hotel. I know that you started this initiative at uh, Park in Newlands Radisson Hotel and that's where that's where the initiative began. So when you did this was it difficult? Um, did you need skilled people? How did you start the process and how did you feel of employing deaf? So how did you find that process? How did you make sure that in the in the same process when employing deaf staff that you're also empowering them in learning about the hospitality environment? So when it came to the interviewing process, um, DEFSA was very, very well coming in and assisting us uh, with the interviewing process. Uh, 
they had uh, enough interpreters um, interviewing you know what what would you must remember is that we were interviewing for character we were interviewing people that were going to have a love for other people we weren't interviewing for skill because that can be taught in this industry as i said you've got to love people um, uh, otherwise you won't fit in so the interviewing process is not different um, other than there being an interpreter perhaps to interpret back to both parties and then through that we can pick up you know is the canada uh, suitable for the hospitality industry are they going to fit in because uh, being in this you've got to always have a smile on your face you've got to enjoy it um, working with people has challenges everybody is different so you know through that we picked up whether people were suitable or not and whether will they make it in the industry so no it wasn't different uh, Thank you so much Clinton for your time and having this interview with us. I'm really excited to also meet with your staff today. So I'm going to go around the hotel and I'm really interested and excited about that. Thank you. Hi Dominique. So we spoke to Clinton about bringing Dev staff from Park into Radisson Blue Waterfront. Um, you as well. How do you feel? working with the staff that have um, come from parking and continuing to work with deaf staff over here? We have only two deaf staff at the moment, one being in my department and it definitely taught me a lot to be more open-minded and to actively listen to what they are saying. To me it was a very humbling experience working with deaf staff. It was the first time that I ever encountered deaf staff and to me it opens up another way of communication. You always think that you won't be able to communicate and it teaches you a whole lot about the people and about ways of communication without actually using words and it's more about body language and your way of doing things instead of saying something. So you've brought up body language and the way that you approach them. Um, can you sign or um, do you usually use sign language or? I've learned to say thank you. Um, oh yes, and, and good morning. <laughs> so <laughs> I have picked up a few things at least, uh, but I know to deaf staff, they are very aware of body movement uh, and of course body language. and when you say something for instance i would think that i'm carrying a mess message across clearly um, but by using gestures it also carries the message across wow i'm very interested um when a hearing person picks up um sign language and they use can't pick up sign language and they use gesture so i'm sure that many others have picked up the same also with guests that come to your hotel so Dominique, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back after the break. We are back from the ad break and we continue our discussions with the Radisson Blue Hotel. We visited them pre-COVID 2020. Let's have a look. We are back from the break. 
and we've interviewed a couple of members here at the Radisson Blue Hotel Waterfront and finally we're meeting with a staff member, a deaf staff member. Hi, my name is Dustin and that's my sign name. Dustin, um, we've interviewed um, the HODs that has worked here. So they've told, told us about the experience from parking units in coming here and also about deaf staff members that have come here as well. So meeting with you now, can you tell us with your previous, um, at the previous properties, how did you end up here and what is the difference between the different properties? Um, same position or different positions? So firstly, I worked at Radisson Blue Sea Point and I was the mini bar in the mini bar and then a few months later I became a room service attendant and it was a lot of work and it was challenging and then I moved to park in Newlands and where I worked the night shift so I've learned a lot and um, I know the work and there were challenges mm -hmm. but it was quite an eye opener for me and then I moved here to the waterfront and I'm back as a mini bar um, room service attendant but I'm also assisting in the breakfast area so how do you feel um, the two responsibilities mini bar and breakfast area which, which do you prefer the breakfast area is much more interactive you get to meet the guests and you greet them and we have more um, guests interacting with me um, like if they ask for coffee etc then i'll show them on the menu if i don't understand what they mean um and then i'll, sh I'll interact with them the mini bar is very different because i go into different rooms um we don't sometimes we don't always i don't always get to see the guests sometimes the guest is showering or the guest is not in the room um so it's quite different um uh, mini bar is more um quiet work in the breakfast area do you feel that deaf people are able to work in the hotel industry or is it a must to have experience just for future what do you think do you think that experience is a must i feel that um Experience isn't really needed if you get to see how it's going and you get the opportunity to also work in the field. Um, you learn quick. The mini part is a little bit of training needed because you need to know the rules. You need to know what you can and can't do. Um, how you finish off to make sure you accommodate um, the guests and also how to catch up. So it is definitely experience needed. Wow, so that's very interesting. Thank you very much for your time, Dustin, on the Disability Show, and good luck with the future. So now we're meeting with another Dave staff member. Wow, she's quite experienced in finance. My name is Anil Imelbra and I've been working for the Wallace and now for over three years but at that property it's a year and a half and um, I'm the financial controller which means I'm overseeing all the money, all the bank account, cash flow and then also to manage the staff and make sure that everything runs smoothly at the other time. So that is why. Anin, can you tell us, is there any challenges that you have with communicating with staff members when it comes to money issues, money shortages, or how do you communicate with them? Are there challenges? Um, a lot of times, um, people get defensive if you um, approach them with a problem. But I find that if you, um, if you just call and explain to them what the problem is, why they have the problem, and then ask the question what happens is, um, communication-wise, if I can't communicate with them, I will send an email. So I, I don't really have certain things to take it up with people because we all know that there's a policy saying that if you so you have to buy it in or if there's a problem we need to invest the time. You can't just leave it. Is there any business stakeholders um, that they're funded and then do you communicate directly to them or do you communicate via the GM when it comes to funding? 
We have a, a book of practice. So I normally work uh, via the delivery manager, but they, if it's more related to farming, then I would like with one of the practice that buys in over. I worked with him before at um, the Western Cape Town. I know him from years ago, so I get very well along with him. And we mostly communicate via email, but if we come to Cape Town, then we have a meeting, um, the cutting questions. So it's really um, easy to communicate with him. One last question. Do you have any message for people that are watching us um, to show that um, if people can work in the front hotel field. Yes, of course, I can. I'm, I'm all open for people that want to grow, that want to learn. And finally, it's not difficult because here yeah, we have less interaction with the kids. And outside people, like suppliers, um, whatever the case might be. But here, yeah, it's just art with the team. So you have your team, and um, I would say that for a deaf person, it, it right to go because we've got emails, we've got internet. Um, but I also want to say that if someone wants to come here, the person also needs to have the attitude of wants to learn, wants to grow, so that you um, are willing to put in extra time, extra hours. We've met with a number of staff and they've all um, noted the experience of working with deaf staff and especially those that have come from parking to here. This is the first time meeting with you so we were like, you know, why do you feel about working with deaf staff? Well for me it's never really been much of a challenge because um, I'm sort of um, come to realize that love is the best mode of communication mode and I never had any issues or troubles communicating. Dustin is one of my best friends around here. He's got partial hearing, but even before that, I've always worked with Lucille in the kitchen. And Lucille, we never had any troubles between us communicating, but when Dustin came over to join us over here, it sort of made life a bit easier, you know, cracking jokes together, and he became my translator between me and Lucille. So communication between the two has never really been a problem. That's quite interesting. Also mentioning a staff member in the kitchen. So did they teach you signs? Do you know sign language structure? Do you know signs coffee, tea? So how do you communicate? Do you use gestures? I've got my own ways of communicating with Lucille. And I don't know how I do it but I've learned quite a lot from her and she's teaching me sign language. She never struggles to hear me. I never struggle to communicate with her. All she told me is just to be myself. She's gonna read my lips. So she communicates back to me in sign language and I understand even though I cannot respond in the same way. But uh, anyway, communication between the two of us has been simplified in that manner. So you feel that it's not really a big challenge to work with this stuff, is that right? No, it shouldn't be. It's not because it's, it's not like it's, it should ever be a challenge. Like I've said before, love is the best mode of communication. If I'm hungry, Lucille knows. And I even specify exactly what I want to eat. And then she fixed me up with a meal. From there, I'm sorted. Thank you so much for your time and interviewing with us on this quality show on CTV. Good luck with everything ahead and working with the day staff. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Maggie, I'm really excited to meet with, meet with you again. The last time we met at Park in Newlands and you are work, you were working with the Dave staff. There you now here at Radisson Blue with the front hotel. Can you tell me why did you continue appointing Dave staff? And before you answer, also what challenges did you face in encountering Dave staff as an HR manager, specifically in the interview process? When I started and we opened parking by Newlands, um, the requirements were to employ 30 deaf staff, 30% uh, of deaf staff, which we did. The challenges that we had, firstly, 
they've never worked in the industry before. That was the biggest challenge that we faced. But no, nothing was too hard for us. Nothing was too hard for them. They were eager, they were excited to try this new venture. And it was amazing working with them. And coming here to the waterfront, we unfortunately only have three deaf staff. It's amazing working with them all over again. So as HR manager, do you think that other hotels are able to appoint deaf staff as well? Because I'm sure a lot of people that are watching us right now want to know more about how it can be done. And so what message could you share with them? Absolutely. And thank you for the question. Um, it is, if any, if every hotel can have one or two or three deaf people, I think we will raise the bar of unemployment. And I will definitely encourage every staff member to reach out to DEFSA and to make contact with them in order to employ. If they have any questions with regards to recruitment, I am open and welcome, you know, for them to come ask me how did I do it, how did Newlands do it, how did Radisson do it. So I challenge every hotel out there to take up the challenge to employ deaf staff. I'm really excited also to see the positive, um, positive side also from you as HR um, because sometimes the requirements are quite high and you guys are willing to accommodate those requirements. So thank you very much for your time and having us interview you on today's disability show and I do hope to see more appointments in the future. Thank you so much. Wow, the day has been extremely interesting. We've met with a lot of people here at Radisson Blue Town Waterfront. And they've appointed a lot of their staff, up to 30% in total over the whole group. So please don't think that deaf people and hearing people cannot work together. It is possible. And I hope that you've learned that today. So more information on the Radisson Blue group, you can check their social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, etc. We'll also share their details. Thank you for watching the Disability Show on Open Studio CTV. My name is Jabal. Goodbye. We're going for a quick ad break and we'll be back after that. We are back from our quick ad break and we're continuing our discussion about employment um, specifically with people in, with disabilities. So we've invited a special guest to join us today. It's Mr. David Iso. He is in the Department of Labor. Welcome, David. Welcome to Accessibility with Jabbar. Thank you very much, and thank you for the invitation. David, we have a lot of uh, barriers that people face, specifically those with disability, in finding a job and getting into the job market. So in our previous segments, we were in the hotel industry and David, can you maybe tell us how do you ensure that the department, makes, the department can check that companies are definitely utilizing the 2% um, percentage for employment of disabled? Well, I think first and foremost, um, we, we need to prepare the labor market for the ability to provide employment for people with disabilities. In other words, if your environment is not correct, you cannot um, appoint people in that position. And I have seen a lot of um, development from a technical point of view, where people are able to perform the same functions as an able-bodied person. But I think the market is not ready for that yet. And so what people do is to kind of um, offset the loss that people have in terms of finance, they rather prefer to employ a abled person than a disabled person. But I think if the state is serious about this, the state should then start either penalizing people for not employing people with disabilities so that we then even out the market. Because quite, quite frankly now, in every organization, the underrepresentation for people with disabilities is alarming and there should be a reason why. 
Wow, David, I think it's quite surprising that the penalizing um, aspect is in place. Can you tell us more specifically for companies that are watching today that have not employed um, any disabled? What kind of penalizing or what steps does the department take in that regard? Well, all, the, the introduction of the Employment Equity Act made an attempt to even out the playing field because we have defined people with disability as a designated group. In other words, you must employ a percentage of people with disabilities for you to be able to meet the obligations of the Employment Equity Act. Now, employers are coming up with all kinds of various reasons. For example, they would say people do not have the qualifications and therefore they can't employ them. But there has been many attempts now and having spoken to, to your host yourself, he has indicated that there are so many institutions out there that are helping to people to equip them to become the same capabilities of people who are able. Now those people should be able to complete or to compete evenly in the labor market at the same rate and should not be seen as a disadvantaged person and therefore will create a problem to the employer. The employer should create the environment for that person so that that can be a showcase for another employer to say, we can brag, we have people here employed that inform or outperform able people. And if you outperform an able person, then clearly you are the best person to work for that company. And I think that is the way for us to go. Wow, David, I think that's very interesting. Um, I think that the processes in place and the acts in place is quite important. Business owners specifically as well as stakeholders, what can you advise them or maybe give them a few, uh, maybe a guide or a tip on how they can start um, to come up with the idea or start the process of employing disabled people, specifically um, in more of an advice aspect? We, 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 we develop learners, we develop intensives. Why are we not developing learners and intensives for people with disabilities? Extensively for that, because we then equip those people to perform the same function as an able person. So what we currently are doing is, a company will develop a learners, and by the way, the only reason why they develop a learners is to have a factory base. So they score financially. Why not invest more of that money into developing learnerships for disabled people in a specific sector or industry? Like for example now, in the hotel industry. We have not seen a learnership for disabled people in the hotel industry. So that we identify the task to be performed and then start to perform exactly the same as an able person. And clearly we can develop skills like that. Because if people like Mr. Zavar, they are able to show people how to perform a function with a disability, then why must you now be disadvantaged against a person with an able body? It should not be the case. Because we all have the same brain, the same ability. It is not our fault that there is one or two issues wrong with us. That should be compensated by virtue of a development process. Wow, David, I think it's quite valuable um, and the perspectives that you share. And also with government processes and the advice you can share for business, I think that it's really important that, gov that government as well as businesses see that view and see that approach. So for those that are disabled and are not working, also need to motivate themselves to get into the job market. And I'm hoping that they're watching today, ready to roll up their sleeves and to become more of an, imp um, to implement that equity act. So, David, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure, man. And send my regards to my host, my dear friend. I will. Thank you so much, David. We do appreciate your time thank and you participating in, ex Bye -bye. in the show. So now we will do um, a quick, sh uh, quick uh, notice board. We will show you on our notice board where you can contact um, the Department of Labor, and all the other stakeholders we've spoken to today and different companies that you can approach and find out if there are internship, internships available, etc. So that information will be available to you. 
Thank you so much for watching Accessibility with Jabal on CTV. Goodbye.